Greetings, brethren. Today we'll be talking about how to know who to follow, how to know who which teachers to follow, how to tell apart between true teachers and false teachers. You know, you know, people think, well, I'll just follow, I'll follow this guy because he's kind and nice, he smiles, he shows God's love. Well, um, it isn't necessarily the case that he he is the one to follow. He's actually teaching you. I mean, he could be killing you with kindness. Just like, for example, Joel Osteen. I mean, he he's people say, well, he's blessed with numbers. And he's a nice guy. He smiles. Um, it's not necessarily the case. He could smile. Um, he could smile and feeding at the same time feeding you poison so um so we'll discuss here how to know to tell apart between true teachers and false teachers and how to know who to follow and uh first thing uh, people think well god blesses you i mean he's blessing a minister because look at his numbers well you just, I, I would like to ask you a question. If you think uh, a ministry is preaching truth because of the numbers, let's say, for example, um, let's take Islam. They have like a billion followers. Um, they have great numbers. They must be preaching the truth. They, might ha they must have the truth uh, of uh, what God, uh, the truth about God. Well, that's not necessarily the case. Just because they have numbers doesn't mean they're preaching the truth. Um, it's not necessarily the case. But uh, it is, you know, it is true that they, uh, it blesses, God will bless a ministry to grow. But it's not necessarily the case of all the time. I mean, especially in the, these last times. You know, but yes, God blesses you. But, um, Matthew 5.45 says that ye may be children of your Father which is in heaven, for he make the sun rise on the evil and the good. He sendeth rain on the just on the, and on the unjust. So yes, God blesses people. But as you say right here, he sendeth rain on the just and unjust. He sends grace uh, even on the un unjust. I mean... It, God is a reason for life here. He sustains. You know, the unjust is blessed with its grace. Um, even though they're not uh, following him. They, he gave them life. And he blesses them and gives them grace to have the ability to choose whether to choose him or to reject him. But he's... He sends blessings even on the unjust. He sends grace. I mean, it's God's grace that he doesn't right now uh, come down out of heaven and stamp out all the wicked right at this moment. He could wipe us all out if he chooses to. But he has a, the grace to give us the chance, give us his long suffering to give us a chance to repent. He does not wish any should perish, but come to repentance. So it's only by God's grace that we're not just stamped out and he could just wipe it, wipe the slate clean and start over. <laughs> he could very well take us out just right now in a breath, in a snap of the finger. So just because um, you say, well, I have numbers and... Uh, God is blessing me. Well, he he sends enough grace, and he could, you know, um, he works all things uh, all things to the greater good. He can use a corrupt uh, a corrupt um, system to to bless people. I mean, you grow. That's one thing. You grow in your faith. You know, well, you know, I was in this system i know what what they teach i'm out of it now i can teach others so 
that's one thing that uh, could come of it. So one thing, I mean, this is one of the main problems in Christianity. Um, they follow people's teachings. They that uh, they are more devout to and a follower to preachers than more than they should follow Christ. You know, you got systems of belief, and uh, they they follow. They rather um, not budge on their beliefs and follow another man's teachings than the teachings of Christ. Like uh, the one preacher that died a few years ago, you got Peter Ruck, Peter S. Ruckman, and he his following is uh, those who still teach a system. Uh, they they have a name for it, Ruckmanites. Or Ruckmanism is the nickname for his system or his teachings. So don't say that I'm I'm of Ruckman or I'm of Thomas Aquinas or I'm of like like a, like it says in First Corinthians three four six. For while one saith I'm of Paul and another I am Apollos, are ye not carnal? Thinking well. I'm, a, I'm, I'm following this guy's teaching and following this guy's teaching. But you shouldn't be like just following a man's teachings about something rather than if he's teaching, um, well, that, that's not what this passage here. Never mind, I'm not going to go that way. But um, don't say that I'm, I'm of this person and I'm of that person. Um, they're great teachers, yes, but rather follow Christ. When when he, when they get things wrong, follow Christ than him. You shouldn't be devout to, to teachers. They are not in charge of your salvation. They indeed were great men of God that preached the gospel, but it's the gospel that saved you. I mean, they're a great man of God because they brought that saving message. But it's the saving message that saved you. Well, that got you saved. So you shouldn't blindly follow preachers. Although they are great men of God. You, fo you should rather follow Christ. When they have, when they err in their teaching, then you should follow Christ. I mean, follow Christ above falling preachers when they when they uh, err in certain places that's when you know in those areas you should actually know you should actually know that's actually an error and fall of Christ then then um, not budge from from their teaching and follow them and follow their errors because your salvation didn't come from them. They indeed brought you what what you heard, the gospel. But it didn't save you. God saved you by his word. And what you heard is what got you saved. And your salvation didn't come from them. It came from God. Um, verse 5 who then is Paul, or and who is Apollos? But ministers, they are but mere servants of God. Ministers, ministering the word, by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, says the Apostle Paul, but Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. God is the one that, that sowed um, that sowed the word in your heart that that he's the one that his spirit the one that came in and cleaned you, you up you enter your heart up and regenerated you it's by the operation of God not the operation of men that um, you were cleansed in your inner man in your heart God saved you not men saved you. They brought the message that you heard.
but it's ultimately God working that he cleansed your heart. So it's God's gift. Salvation is God's gift by grace through faith that because God showed his grace, he was willing to give you this gift of life everlasting, never ending life. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through whom? Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Precious is that gift of life everlasting, never ending life through the one who accomplished the atonement, shedding, uh, suffering, excruciating pain, being whipped and spat upon and beaten and and going to the cross and uh, bleeding to death, the most humiliating by death, according to man. Amen. That he did that for us. But it's by the the seed, the incorruptible seed, which is the word that sown was sown into our hearts, the gospel, and without that gospel, we shall be lost. That same method, he was, that was seed that was grown, sown in our hearts, that sprouted up into eternal life. <coughs> in First Peter. Chapter 1, verses 22 to 25. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth, obeying the truth that you believed on the only begotten Son of God, through the Spirit unto unfeigned love. It's through the Spirit that regenerate and cleanse you and cleanse your heart unto eternal life. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Being born again, not a crop of seed, not of seed that f fades away, not of men's words, but the were very words of God, but of the incorruptible seed, N not a seed, not the word of men that fade away, that fails, but a seed or word that never fails. It set, it accomplishes what. He sends out to do. His word shall not come back to him void, but shall accomplish what he has sent it out to do. For all flesh is as grass, and all glory of men as the flower of grass. The grass wither away, and the flower thereof fadeth away. So the glory of man is just the temporary thing. Life is but temporary is just a vapor or a breath and it's gone so it's temporary the glory men the glory that he thinks he's um so important in this life i am some president or some construction worker i'm someone important that shall fade away and ultimately, it's not important in the ultimate sense. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. But the short thing that shall not fade away is his word. He will accomplish what he sets it out to do. This is the word by which the gospel is preached unto you. Matthew 13, 9. And when one hears, so that what is the seed? When one heareth the word of the kingdom, understand it not, and cometh the wicked one, so this is just going down the kinds of seeds that were sown, but uh, what I want to uh, make you aware of, the seed that, what the seed is, the word that was sown in the person's heart. In this case, the word of the kingdom was sown on a person's heart, but quickly the wicked one catches away 
which was sown his heart, this is which received seed by the wayside. That's those who do not understand the gospel, that the ears and the eyes were blind to the glorious light of the gospel in this case. Yet that the, the ground that was sown upon, the heart, the heart was hardened and didn't and did not receive that seed but what is the the you know the heart that received the seed it's in verse 23 but he received the seed into the good ground that is the pure the heart that received the seed that um hears the word understands the word um um Admits that he's a sinner and believes on the only begotten Son of God, he lets the word um, permeate his heart and change it. But he that received the seed into the ground is he that understandeth, uh, heareth the word, that hears the word, understandeth it, which also beareth fruit unto righteousness, beareth fruit, the spiritual fruit of uh, peacefully is faith, goodness, tempers, bring forth some a hundred and some sixty and some thirty. The seed that was sown in your heart, the fruit that bears fruit would manifest in your actions. But it's the seed that was sown in your hearts. The word that you received and uh, believed it and it converted you it's not by men, although they deliver that word, but it's by the word itself. And it's by, through his spirit, that cleanses your heart. Titus 3, 5, not by the works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy as he does, by the watching of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Spirit that cleanses your heart. So let's get to how to recognize bad teachers false teachers a teachers just love the praises of men they gain a, a gain gain a big following contrary to that they are contrary that they're preaching a false gospel you know people I mean you you question how come they have great following like uh, Islam obviously it's not it's not totally correct and still they have a big following why just like the church there's some fringes of the church Jehovah's Witnesses um, uh, Mormons how come they have big followings although they're preaching a false gospel well, or, you know, in the, not necessarily preaching a false Christ, but they, those have followings like Joel, Joel Osteen. But why? How to recognize that? They love the praises of men. <clears throat> they love to be followed rather than they have to rather, they rather have people follow them. Love the praises of men than to lose followers and uh, you know they're only concerned about being followed and losing followers rather than having people actually follow God in the truth of the matter just like the Pharisees they they they, they rather ignore the message they were offended that uh, the Messiah actually came that they should believe they repent but they did not want to uh, confess Christ publicly because they loved the praises of men rather of God they didn't want to be shunned by their peers so they loved John 12 43 for they love the praises of men more than they love the praises of God we see in the following this to be true they rather not confess publicly because they fear of being shunned by their peers the Pharisees 
and nevertheless the chief rulers also have many believed on him but because the Pharisee did not confess at least they should be put out of the synagogue you know they love praises of men their peers be accepted of the peers rather than actually confessing him and have eternal life they rather love the things of this life rather than love the things of the next life and they love the praises of men they love seen uh, they love to be seen as someone important as someone pious look how righteous I am rather than you know humbling themselves saying I am a dude, dirty rotten no good sinner and I need someone to set me free from it uh, so so they love the praises of men Matthew 6 2 therefore when they thou doest thy alms do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory of men verily I say unto you that they have their reward not to be men so we shouldn't be men pleaders but rather God pleaders you know that's the thing you know some preachers are afraid to preach the truth because they would f lose their following they shy, shy on things because they are, are afraid of persecution by let, let's say they're let's say the government don't don't preach on homosexuality because you might get in trouble you might go to prison don't 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 uh, say say anything discouraging about transgenders you might get fined or something men pleasers we shouldn't be men pleasers but rather God pleasers we shouldn't shriek back and preach a false gospel because you know men don't want to be condemned So we shouldn't be, should not be men pleasers, but God pleasers. Um, Galatians 1, 9 to 10. As we said before, so I said now again, if any man preach another gospel unto you than ye have received, let him be accursed. Anathema. Under God's wrath and the curse and condemnation. Anathema. So that's that's how serious the people some preachers do not understand. We do not preach the word by our opinions or what we rather rather the Bible to say. They're under a curse, anathema. You made my little ones stumble. It's better for them to have a millstone. Um, tied around their necks and be cast into the depths of the sea <laughs> then you would make my little ones stumble so verse 10 for do I now persuade men or God do I seek to please men for if I pleased men I should not be a servant of Christ now, if I was worried about the uh, offending people, that uh, they, they, that people's feelings would get hurt because they do not want to change. They, the, you know, uh, don't tell me that. Uh, don't tell me what I'm doing is wrong. I, I just want to be the opposite of gender. Although um, I cannot change my only my appearance, I want to, want to uh, desecrate the temple of God. Oh, well, not temple of God. Only believers are temple of God, but the image of God. I just want to destroy it. Don't tell me not to destroy it. Don't tell me I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, made in the image of God. I just want to do my own thing and desecrate the, the, this image of God. I'm not going to be concerned, complacent about trying to offend people and 
and uh, preach a false gospel or preach falsehood or not preach anything that that they need to hear just like the apostle Paul says if I please men and preach a false gospel I, I wouldn't be a servant of Christ that brings the truth the light that shines in the darkness of this world. First Thessalonians 2, 3-6 three, three For our, our exhortation was not of deceit, nor uncleanness, nor in guile, but as we are loud of God, so we weren't trying to cunning and deceive you, but uh, we are loud of God, we are entrusted, put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, of this gospel, this word that we are entrusted with, the, to deliver unto this, the, the people of the world, not in pleasing men, but of God, which trieth our hearts. For neither at any time we used, used we flattering words. We didn't come to deceive you, or to actually deceive you, or to butter you up. That that's one thing that irks me. They. Some preachers preach falsehood and butter people up, and the the so the word of God says that we shouldn't. The the coming cunning craftiness, waiting to lie to deceive. We did not use flattering words to butter you up, to make you feel the good of your abominations. As you know, nor a cloak of covetedness. God is witness. Nor men sought we glory, not the glory in our own selves, but glory of the glory of God. Neither of you, nor yet of others, we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. How do they draw you away? the Bible the scriptures attest to this <laughs> how do the people get led away and people like being like what uh, how they uh, being led away how would how would uh, you lead someone away if they do not like what you're preaching so how do they draw you away by their preaching by their deceitfulness, by their sounding to be true when they're not true. So, so let's say, um, say like like money. You know, ask be, uh, um, similar to like a dollar bill, like. Like say the one dollar bill, it has to look similar, it's almost almost exactly like a dollar, for you to believe it's a dollar. But it's a little inconsistencies. You got you got uh, say the picture of the Co Captain Crunch man on the dollar rather than um, rather than George Washington. <laughs> There's a little inconsistencies. I mean, it wouldn't be that obvious. Um, let's say George Washington with a mohawk. I don't know. It'll be a little inconsistencies. You know, it quite looks like that, but I don't think George Washington had a mohawk. <laughs> so it has to seem like to be, to counterfeit something, it has to look like, seem like it's the, the legit so that's how they deceive you they deceive you with something that appears to be the truth but it's just only slightly bent it's it's bent into like they, they bend it they bend it in like a 45 degree angle not a or a 90 degree angle. They've been in a 90 degree angle. They, it's not totally 180 degrees like pointing the other way to falsehood. But they just bend it enough that that it seems to be true but it's not really true. 
um, Acts 20, 29 and 30, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise among your own selves, speaking for perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Just like I said, they bend it just enough. They, they, um, they preach just enough truth that it makes you believe that they are actually preaching truth. And when it's not, it seems like to be a legit dollar bill, but Abraham, uh, George Washington has a mohawk. <laughs> ah, there's something fishy here. I don't think that's um, consistent with history. I don't think that hairstyle was invented yet. <laughs> so Romans 16, 17, 18. So they deceive you with seem, things that seem to be the truth when they're not. Now people, people would they flock to they flock to to these teachings because. They see, they see what they want. That they're given what they want. Complacency. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which call divisions and offenses, contrary, contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them, contrary to the doctrine that which you already received. For they are such serve not their own Lord Jesus Christ. But their own bellies, their own greed, their their own uh, pride. Look how much stuff I'm doing, although I'm not standing for absolute truth. By good words and fair speeches deceives the hearts of the simple. You know, people flock to flock to false teachers. Because they they give them what what they want, not what they need. They tell them what they want to hear, and not what they need to hear. For Second Timothy four three to four, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, after their own lust, they will heal up themselves to teachers. After they want what they want to hear, but not what they need to hear. Having itching ears. Oh yes, I'm a good person. I don't need to repent. Oh, you're a good person. Uh, you don't need to repent. Oh, my ears. And they turn their ears away from the truth and onto fables. That reminds me, you know, preachers want to be complacent. Don't call people to re repent. That is like people today. Oh, uh, give me what I want to hear and not what you need to hear. Well, that's not up to you. You don't tell what the preacher to preach. You don't bully the, what the preacher needs to preach. Don't preach on homosexuality. Don't preach on transgenderism. Don't... Uh, Preach on the errors of Catholicism. Don't preach on the errors of Jehovah's Witness. Don't preach on the errors of Mormons. Don't preach on the, the, the errors that you hear out there that deny the blood of Jesus Christ. That he did not, it was not substitutionary. Do not preach unto us um, repentance. Like, like uh, back in, in the old days, Isaiah 30, 9 to 13. But this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Where say to the seers, see not, do not prophesy unto us. And to the prophets, or seers, do not foretell of things to come. And prophesy not to the right things. Speak unto us smooth things, what we want to hear. Don't preach unto... Unto us judgment. 
Don't preach unto us repentance. Prophesy what we want here. Prophesy deceits and lies. Sounds familiar? Oh, don't say homosexuality is abomination unto the Lord. Don't say that transgenderism is is skewing the image of God. Don't do this. Don't preach unto us. Just give us what we want to hear. I'm sorry. The Bible doesn't give you what you want to hear, but what you need to hear for eternal life. Get you get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Wherefore thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because you despised my word, because you despised my word, and trust in oppression of perverseness, stake thereon. Therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach, ready to fall, swelling out in a, high way, a highway whose breaking cometh suddenly as, at an instant. So what do true teachers teach you? They tell you to repent. They tell you the truth, although you feel bad about it. I mean, just like, just like tr true friends, like true friends, they tell you the honest truth, although it might hurt your feelings. They'd rather better yourself than be complacent about it. True teachers tell you to repent and warn you of wolves because they don't want you to be deceived and they, because of the fear of the Lord. Just like Jesus command, commanded that uh, that repentance and the remission of sins should be preached in the name, in His name, and among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. That repentance and remission of sins. Repent, change your mind, change how you perceive this thing admit that you're a sinner yes I'm a sinner I need saved I, I totally helpless here those teachers who say yeah the, uh, homosexuality yeah it, it's actually wrong it's not God's design it, that's not how you procreate I'm sorry two two of the same genitals do not make a baby. That just it just doesn't happen. Not humans anyway. Just does not happen. Two males don't make a baby. Two females don't make a baby. You need a male and a female to make a baby. It's just how what nature is. It's just the reality we find ourselves in. You need a sperm cell and an egg. You can't have two sperm cells and two or two eggs. That does not make a baby. I'm sorry. That's that's just it. I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry to tell you. Wake up. That's how reality is. You need a sperm cell and the egg. So, true teachers tell you repent. Tell you like it is. And not shriek back. Oh, I might offend someone that are preaching error, they might not be converted. Well, did, 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 the, did God tell you in the last times, in the last times, and the, didn't he tell you that the church will fall away? It's not going to get better. People will be offended because they rather love darkness than light. Oh, I don't agree with you. I don't agree with people get rejecting the word and getting offended because it it shines the light on their darkness. Don't shine the light on their darkness. It's hateful. Tell them lies so they feel good. No. <laughs> so true teachers. So let me get on with it. True teachers tell you repent and warn of your wolf, warn of wolves. That's the preacher's job to do. Acts 20, 28 to 31. Take heed therefore on yourselves 
and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost made you overseers. So you're you have the responsibility to warn warn the flock that the Holy Ghost put you under and to feed them the word and watch over their spiritual growth. That's your job. Which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter among you, not sparing the flock. Who's going to protect the flock of being devoured by these wolves? I don't know. So you're telling me, I'm going to open the gate, come in wolves, come in wolves, eat all the flock. Or am I going to shut the gate and say, And scare off all the wolves. Also your own self shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw, draw away disciples after them. They'll keep, they draw people away. Willing because the twisting of the word of God. <laughs> and the, to the leading away of people's and damnation of people's souls. That, that's the thing. Are you concerned about people's souls being led away into the eternal damnation? Being deceived? Or are you gonna say, "Who are you to, who are you to um, say that's deception?" <laughs> I don't know, but let's get on. Um, Paul, Paul constantly warned these people about these wolves, about these errors, about the people getting being led away. Go for a watch and remember that space of the well, Apostle Paul. I, I thought, it, I, if I'm not right, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I thought this was Apostle Paul, but um, I think it is. Therefore, watch, I'm just having a, a kind of a forgetful moment. But, therefore, watch, remember, by the space of three years, I ceased not to warn everyone, day and night, with tears. He constantly, for three years, yeah, this Apostle Paul, um, So it's not like, oh, uh, here's my, it's not like, uh, here's my opinion, take it or leave it. Okay, bye-bye. Good luck. Or did he warn them? Day and night. Day and night for three years. So that's a constant warning. Not just, well, here's my opinion. It might, might not be right. But go ahead. Go into the wolf's den. Go ahead. Or should, you, should preachers warn people about this stuff? No matter what it takes. True teachers contend for the faith. Jude, verse 3. There's no chapter division in the epistle of Jude. Or the book of Jude. So it's. Let's say chapter 1 verse 3. There's no, no chapter division. It's just verse 3. Behold which I gave all diligence to write unto you. The, of the common salvation. Which was needful for me to write unto you. And exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith. True teachers earnestly contend for the faith. Because it, it's. It's the fear of the Lord. It's concerning of where souls are headed up at. When you have a wolf amongst yourself, don't invite him to dinner. Scare him off. 
You say to your sheep, this is a wolf. Not say, yeah, th this is one of the monks of the sheep. He means you no harm. No, he earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. I gotta get back. As what was once delivered, the faith that was once delivered unto the saints, unto the apostles, the same, the same faith, the foundation of Christ, the same as it was once delivered unto them, we should stick to. Not to go in, in different directions, departing from the true teachings of, of God's word. Titus 1 9, holding fast the faithful word, holding firm, standing firm, both feet firmly planted, grounded and rooted in the truth, standing firm on it, standing up for it, like you're standing for freedom, against oppression, against the evil, in, in, like in the physical here, against like you're standing up against tyranny. You stand to the Holy Word as it's once been taught. Not just, well, I'm going to teach it some different way. Maybe I can teach it better than, uh, than the apostles taught it. <laughs> that would be uh, something dangerous if you said that. That by may uh, by sound doctrine both exhort and convince the gainsayers that oppose themselves to the lost people. They exhort them, exhort the people by sound doctrine to grow and to convince for the to convince the to those who oppose themselves to repent, change their minds about Christ and His Word. True teachers preach, preach truth, although it might offend people, although they might feel bad about it, because it talks about them. You stand condemned already. It's just, it's just um, when preacher preach, yes, here's the truth. It, it was true before I told you, but I'm just letting you know. I'll let you know what's true. It was true before I told you. And it's true now, and it shall be true forever. Um, despite losing followers, just like Jesus Christ to the Pharisees departed, they hardened their hearts. Do not tell tell you that they, you are the actual bread of life. How dare you? Blah, 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 blah. Well, what is this? What is this? Scoffing at it. He says. Eat my flesh and drink my blood. What is this? Such a fool. Like Pharisee said. So truth divides. Those who harden their hearts. And go away. Many therefore of the disciples. When they have heard this said. It is a hard thing who can hear it. When Jesus knew himself. And his disciples murmured it. He said unto him. Does this offend you? Doth this offend you? Jesus asked if that if that he, that saying offended them. <laughs> so if you're telling me this what Jesus said is wrong. Don't offend nobody. <laughs> but Jesus said, does this offend you? Huh? It's true. What if ye shall see the Son of Man ascending up where he was before? Well, what if he has seen this? Are you going to repent or just scoff at the truth? It is the spirit that quickeneth, and the flesh profiteth nothing. But the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and life. They are the words of eternal life. So don't scoff. This is the truth. 
But there are some that believe not, for Jesus knew from the beginning who were, who they were that believed not, and who would betray him. And he said, Therefore I said unto you, that no man can come unto me, except it was given unto him of my Father. From that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with them, they but departed. See the truth, the vice, they're offended. <laughs> oh, he, he sees foolers. <laughs> Who is this guy? And he departed. Or, you know, I don't know, but. And Jesus said unto twelve, his, the twelve disciples, that believed his word, believed who he was. He said, will you also go away? Will you also betray me and, and depart from me? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Where shall we go? To who else? What teacher shall we follow? It's you. You are the one that has the words of eternal life. They answer to him rightly. They believed him. Where shall we go? Who shall we believe? You have proved that you are the Messiah. We're not going anywhere. You're the one that has the words of eternal life. We fully trust in you. So the truth divides. Despite learning the followers, he said, I'm the bread of life. I'm the one that sends, <laughs> was sent it down to, for salvation. Bring the words of life. And the first was like, ah, I just scoffed at it. And then they're like, what is this thing? This is foolishness. He said, he, he eat my flesh and drink my blood. What, what is this? <laughs> it's so foolish. So don't be, so don't be a f worried about it. The truth divides. People depart from Jesus Christ because they, he told them the truth. So who are you to think that he, you will spare, be spared of the luxury that people won't, that won't depart from you? Oh, I, I, I don't want people to depart from me, so I won't tell them, I won't, I won't tell them things that will offend them. Take your example from Jesus Christ. He said, said to them the truth, although it offended them. It's between them and God if they choose to reject. You did your job. You told the truth. So you leave it up to God. <laughs> they departed. They scoffed at the truth. Because they rather they rather love darkness than light. So the truth teachers preach the truth, although it offends, although it's, it's not popular today. They preach the truth. Although despite because the truth divides, people people reject it. Don't keep them from rejecting the truth. I mean, don't, don't, uh, don't keep, keep them from losing. Uh, don't be afraid to lose people and preach untruth rather than preaching truth. You rather preach truth than, uh, than to have many. I rather, I rather follow ministry that preaches truth and has a limited amount of people than to follow a ministry that preaches lies to you and have thousands of followers. I'd rather have you follow the one that preaching truth and have a limited amount of followers. Not about the, the, the amount of followers that a ministry has. It's about if they stand for truth. So remember that. So we'll see so we'll so I hope you learned a lot. I hope you uh, heed this warning. And uh, can you tell between a false teacher and a true teacher? A teacher that smiles at you and preaches to you lies. Or the one that tells you what you need to hear. Not what you want to hear. You don't tell them to preach unto you lies. And uh, don't don't be afraid to preach the truth.
Don't shriek back. I might lose people. Well, you did your job. You did your job. Preach the truth. So remember that. Truth divides. People harden their hearts. What, what can you do? What can you do if they harden their heart? Did your job. So, hopefully you'll learn a lot. Talk between true teachers and false teachers. Hopefully you learned a lot and heed this message. And, um, thank you and take care.